don't know. You know, it's horrible when you're cold, when you're stone cold and bone cold. And it's horrible when you're hungry, especially when you're hungry all the time. And it's that dull pain and you don't feel happy. And it's horrible when you're lonely, when your heart isn't big, but it shrinks every day because you're lonely. And that was what little Cecil was like. Little Cecil, he lived in a cottage on the edge of the wood and he lived with his granddad. And it was an old cottage, it was a poor cottage and it only had one chair in it. Cecil didn't go to school. School was a long, 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 long way away. And all the other children, well, they lived over the other side of the mountains. Cecil never played with anyone. Cecil never had a birthday. Cecil never had any celebration. And Cecil never had a Christmas. But Grandad came to Cecil on Christmas Eve. And Grandad said, Oh, Cecil, I've got a bit of a surprise for you. Do you know what? It's Christmas Eve, Cecil. <laughs> and I've got two biscuits. As a treat for Christmas, we're going to have that for our Christmas dinner. Oh, Cecil was delighted, but he had a secret. He wasn't going to tell Grandad. But when they got up in the morning, Cecil had two sweets, a red one and a green one. And he gave both to Grandad for his Christmas. But Cecil knew Grandad would always give him one of the sweets back. Oh, he was so excited, because even if you've got nothing, Christmas is magical. He said goodnight to Grandad. He went up the stairs, opened the door of his bedroom and went in. He had no bed. He had to sleep on the floor, the stone cold floor. So he took off his cardboard shoes and he got a newspaper. That was his blanket, but he didn't put the newspaper on straight away. He put on his paper coat first because he wanted to be extra warm tonight. Well, because there was a big crack in the window and the snow would sometimes come in. He lay on the cold floor and soon he dropped down, down into the well of sleep. And as soon as he'd done that, the wind started to whistle outside. Somewhere, a window banged, and Cecil woke up. He listened to the wind, and he was quite scared. But there was something else he heard, just under the wind. Another sound, like a tune. And he listened, and he went up to the window, and he put his face to the window, but not too close, because the window was freezing with frost, and he didn't want his skin to get stuck to it. He listened to the crack. And he heard, <coughs> it was a sound, it was a voice, it was a child. Cecil quickly went to Grandad's bedroom, but Grandad was so fast asleep he didn't want to wake him. So Cecil put on his cardboard shoes, put on his paper coat, wrapped, uh, folded his uh, blanket up and put it inside his shirt to keep warm. And then he quietly went down the stairs to the front door. He opened the front door. Uh, the winter came in. The wind came in and grabbed Cecil. But Cecil fought against the wind and he, he closed the door and he was outside. And he made his way across the snow. He listened for the sound. It was coming. It was coming from the woods. He had to go to the woods. He wrapped up his cloak around him and his nose went blue and his knees went red and his poor cardboard shoes got soaked in the freezing snow. <laughs> Against the wind, Cecil made his way. <laughs> and on and on and on and on and on, poor Cecil went. And on and on and on and on and on, poor Cecil went until the snow came up to his knees. And by that time, 
He was on the edge of the woods, the black curtain of trees. He knew the cry was coming from inside the woods, so he stepped out of the world and into the woods. It was quiet in the wood. Cecil looked around. He could hear the dripping of the snow from the trees, and then he heard the cry again. It was a baby's cry. It was a little baby. What is a baby doing out here? Cecil ran, ran to the sound of the crying, and then saw a ditch filled up with snow. And on top of the snow was the baby, not wrapped up in a blanket. No clothes, just open to the world. Oh, you poor thing, thought Cecil. Bent down, took the baby, wrapped the baby up in the newspaper and put the baby inside his coat. And you should always do that. If you find a hurted bird or any other creature, put it inside your coat and then it'll get warm and dark and cosy. Come along, little baby, you've got to go with me. Two lights appeared in the woods, golden lights. As Cecil looked, he saw the rise. They were the eyes of wolves. Oh, said Cecil, little baby, come with me. Cecil turned, Cecil ran, ran. But then other lights began to show. There was the pack of wolves, and the pack of wolves came after Cecil. They came out of the darkness, their sharp ears, their long, long jaws, and their big paw pads used for running fast on top of the snow. Cecil ran and ran and ran to the edge of the wood and jumped into the world. <laughs> he tried to get through the snow, but the snow was up to his knees. It was hard to walk in the snow. And the wolves came after. The wolves came after him, running along the top of the snow and howling. Oh, 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 oh. Cecil ran. But the wolves are getting closer and closer and closer. <laughs> <laughs> so he could feel the hot breath on the back of his neck, but he was nearly at the door, nearly at the door, nearly at the door. He opened the door, he slipped in, he slammed the door as a wolf crashed into the door. Cecil was now in the house and it was quiet. Oh, baby, you're okay now. You're okay. Cecil brought the baby to the fire. Now, they had two sticks round Adam and Cecil. Two sticks for Christmas Day fire. They always had a fire on Christmas. But Cecil thought, I'll light the fire for the baby, and he lit the fire. And then he thought, well, those two biscuits Grandad had, I'd better give them to the baby. The baby needs them more to, than us. He put the two biscuits in a glass, put some milk in, crushed them up, and fed the baby the only two biscuits in the house. And then he got his presents, the red sweet and the green sweet, and he crushed them up, mixed them with water, and fed that to the baby. Well, the baby was now getting nice and warm. Cecil would have to see the baby tomorrow. Cecil made his way up the stairs to his room, shut the door, lay on the cold, cold ground with the wind outside, and soon Cecil was fast asleep. And when Cecil touched the edge of sleep, <coughs> The baby got up. The baby stood. The baby looked around the poor house. The baby began to walk, walk towards the door. The baby put out its hand and the door opened straight away and the wind in the winter howled into the house. But the baby put up his hand like that again and the wind in the winter stopped immediately. The wolves that were circling the house, they saw the baby. <laughs> Tails between their legs, the wolves ran back, ran back to the woods. And the baby looked up towards the freezing, twinkling stars. The baby raised his hand and a light came out of the hand. <laughs> up into the stars. Well, Santa Claus was coming across the night sky with his 16 reindeers. Come on then, Rudolph. We've got an awful lot of children to see tonight. Rudolph, look. Rudolph, it's the light. 
It's the light. Wheel round. And he pulled on the reins, and the sleigh wheeled round, and the sleigh descended onto the snow. All the reindeers were still, their bells silent, as they looked at the baby. Grand, um, Santa Claus got out of the sleigh, knelt down, bowed his head to the baby. The baby raised his hand to Santa Claus and pointed to the cottage and disappeared. Well, Santa Claus got up. Rudolph, check out the cottage. Rudolph ran to the cottage, nosed his uh, way in through the door, looked at Santa Claus and said, mm. Santa Claus said, Well, we'd better see about that. I don't remember ever being in this. My goodness, what a poor house. The poor people who live here have nothing. Well, we'll soon see about that, Rudolph. Look at that fire. It's nearly burning out. They need a real fire. <coughs> Suddenly, the flames began to leap and warmth permeated the whole house. Oh, Rudolph, they haven't even got a Christmas tree. Let's give them one. <coughs> the Christmas tree was lovely and went halfway up the wall. But Santa Claus said, well, that's not big enough. <coughs> Well, the Christmas tree went three quarters of the way up the wall, and it was full of all gifts and candy and candles and cakes. And Santa Claus said, that's not good enough. <coughs> well, that tree was so big, the top of it touched the ceiling and bent over. That's better. Oh, look at those flashing lights. Now they're now then they have nothing to eat. Let's give them first some furniture. All around the room were carpets, curtains, there were chairs, there were sofas, there were tables, there were pictures, there were mantelpieces. It was a beautiful room. Well, what this room needs, yes, that's right, what it needs is food. Ready, Rudolph? Suddenly a table appeared in the room. It went from one wall to the other wall, and it was groaning with food. All sorts of food were there. Well, that's a magical table. But now what about some presents? Let's give them some presents. Ding! And the pile of presents went halfway up the wall. It was like a pile of coal, all the presents spilling down. And Santa Claus said, well, that's not good enough. Ding! It went halfway up the wall now, with the presents spilling down into half the room. And Santa Claus said, well, that's not good enough. <laughs> half of the room was full of presents of all shapes and sizes. Come along, Rudolph, we've got to go. There are children to take care of. And they left. Cecil woke up the next morning and thought, I'm so cold. It well, no, I, I'm not cold. I'm warm. For the first time in my life, I'm warm. Grandad, Grandad, what's making us warm? But when he opened Grandad's door, well, Grandad wasn't there. And then Cecil heard from downstairs, Cecil, come down, come down now. Oh, no, Grandad's found the baby. Cecil went to the top of the stairs and, using the balustrade, went down, opened the door, and the first thing Cecil saw was the fire. Oh, Grandad! <laughs> Grandad, look at the fire! And then the second thing Cecil saw was the Christmas tree. Oh, my God! <laughs> Cecil didn't know what to do. He was sitting to thoughts. He was so excited. And then Cecil saw the table groaning with food. <laughs> he picked up a plum pudding. <laughs> he ate it. And here's the odd thing. As soon as he ate the plum pudding, another one came in its place. This is the table that would never be empty. And then Cecil looked around and he saw the presents. He screamed with joy, and Grandad held him and said, Cecil, we'll never have another bad Christmas. 
Well, Cecil gave presents away to the children over the other side of the mountains, and they came to visit him regularly, and he played with others for the first time. He was never lonely again. He was never cold again. He was never hungry again. But he'd never forget the time he met the baby and the time that Santa Claus came. Happy Christmas, everybody. Happy Christmas.